thank you for meeting with me today. Um, not many people probably know who you are. So can you explain who you are? <laughs> I am uh, Brad Feikenhoff. I'm an architectural photographer. I'm based in Columbus, Ohio. And um, I wanted to speak with you today. Obviously, I've worked for you for years. Um, and I've always heard stories of your time in New York. And um, one of the photographers in particular that you worked for is Arnold Newman. And so I really wanted to speak with you today because I am um, joining forces with Ann Cornell from the Pomerine. I just wanted you to share your time, your experiences with him, how you feel about his artwork and also the importance of it. So I will give you the floor. <laughs> No, uh, Arnold was, um, in all truthfulness, he, he was a pretty wonderful person to have worked for. He was kind of a very grandfatherly figure, um, you know, a little crotchety, a little ornery, uh, but deep down very loving and, and caring. Um, it, it took a while. Uh, when I was working in New York City, it was very uh, you know, you, you had people who you wanted to work for and uh, you would kind of call upon them and call upon them and try and be persistent to see if you could get yourself in the door. And Arnold was somebody who, you know, I, I didn't want to call more than once a week because, uh, I mean, once a week seemed uh, to be a pest and every two weeks seemed to be more uh, likely and and so I, I called his studio like every Monday every other week for, for months and one you know said is there any openings here and Arnold happened to answer one day and and he said how are your spotting skills uh, because this is in the time of doing black and white printing and um, not pre Photoshop and, and when you make a black and white print, you'd have to go in where there was dust and spot those prints. And I said, my spotting skills are okay, but they could probably be a bit better. And he said, that's an honest answer. I want you to come in tomorrow. <laughs> and, um, and so I went in the following day and um, he had me spot some prints for him and hired me and um, I worked for Arnold for pretty much the last three months that I lived in New York City. Um, and with Arnold, um, Arnold had an apartment uh, with his wife, uh, Augusta, um, who was wonderful. Um, and their apartment was right next door to the studio. So the, the studio and the apartment were almost like one and the same. And so it was not uncommon that, uh, you know, Arnold would send you back over to the apartment to get a different pair of shoes for him or whatever. So we were very much a part of his life, not only personally and professionally. Um, as far as working with Arnold, um, pretty much all of the work that we I did with Arnold um, was lit with tungsten lights. Um, he didn't really use um, strobes that much. It was all pretty much tungsten lights. Um, did he just like the warmth of them or? I, I think it was less the warmth than with tungsten lights, he could see what mm. he was doing. Yeah. Uh, which, which I, I mean, I understand it. It's sort of uh, plus, I mean, I think if you look at Arnold's period in photography, when he started out, there weren't strobes. Yeah. So he probably started out with tungsten lights and felt comfortable with tungsten lights and therefore continued to use tungsten lights. Um, but in the time that I was with him, 
a considerable amount of my time was doing printing for him. He had a big retrospective show at the Sydney Janus Gallery, which I printed, um, I think, everything that was in the show that wasn't already a vintage print. Um, and, um, and he, and we worked on several, uh, we photographed uh, a bunch of ladies of high society who for Town and Country Magazine, Town and Country Magazine was, is no longer in existence, but it was kind of a very high society. This is how the rich and famous live. And <laughs> um, so we, we photographed, you know, we go into their apartments and then set up all the lighting and everything for them um, to do their portraits. Um, which, which uh, a lot of these portraits were shot, um, some were shot with the Hasselblad, some were shot 35 millimeter, uh, a lot were shot four by five. Um, Arnold was uh, a Canon, um, what is it? Uh, Explorer of Light. Um, oh, yeah, um, like, um, I forget his name. Um, uh, your friend from Spain. Oh, Fernando. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Fernando from is. Portugal. He, um, but he was an explorer of light, and okay. um, and as an explorer of light, and because of Arnold, I mean, Canon sent him every single new lens and everything. He had he had a room that was full of lenses, many of which he never even picked up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I'd, I'd go into that room and like, it was like, oh, um, oh goodness. But like if, if Canon had new lens, Arnold got it, you know. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, he, he we fought, uh, photograph uh, Claus and Guzzi uh, Oldenburg for American Airlines magazine. Um, we went up to Princeton, New Jersey and photographed um, all the scientists at the Institute for Advanced Study, which is where Einstein was when he was oh. alive. Um, I mean, honestly, that was probably the photo shoot that Arnold made Arnold most nervous. Um, not that he didn't respect artists. I mean, he did, but he was, he was really in awe of scientists. He felt that scientists were kind of magical people and, and like to photograph this room full of like 35 of the most cutting edge scientists of the time that were all at this think tank in Princeton and that we were going to do this group portrait of them was uh, very, very important to him. And he, he just wanted to make sure that he got it right. And so, I mean, in the case of that, it, even though it was, I wouldn't call it an environmental portrait because we were sort of doing it on a, on a stage. But it was interesting because we brought in all these stools and all these things and we set up lighting. And when we set up the lighting, um, I mean, basically, I sat in for each and every one of the different scientists. So wow. like, like, I would sit on a stool and we perfect the lighting for that person. And then I'd move over to a chair and I'd sit in the chair and we perfect the lighting for that person. And then I'd stand somewhere and we, per and, and we did that for like 35 people. So that once, when they came, you know, okay. they knew that their, their time was valuable and that when they walked into that room, there wasn't the time to be tweaking all the lighting. So they all came in, they put them into all their positions. We obviously needed to tweak things a little bit, but he already had envisioned 
you know, the entire setting and how everybody was going to be and where everybody's position was going to be in this kind of group shot. So um, in a way, it's kind of like his environmental portraits and because he did, he would kind of compose it first and then put the person in. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, I mean, with all of his environmental portrait, I mean, even the ladies in Town and Country Magazine, he would go and we would go in, you know, he would pick his vantage point of the room or whatever. We'd take a Polaroid, and this is I, this is kind of funny because we take a Polaroid so we knew where everything went. Oh, that's. And then we <laughs> might move a bunch of things around in the room mm -hmm. for compositional purposes, and then we'd bring in the subject. We plop her down in the. <laughs> or I shouldn't say plop. We <laughs> place her in in the space. Yeah. And we would then photograph her. And then as we were breaking down lights and everything, we then would have the part, the Polaroid we had taken at the onset of the photo shoot to put be able to put everything there. back as we found it. That's very, I mean, just nice of you. <laughs> we, we do a lot of guessing, I feel like, sometimes. When you're, when you're going into these high society people's homes. Oh, well, that's true. Well, I mean, most of these people's homes were so meticulously decorated and everything that everything wow. had its place and therefore everything should go back to its place. Well, it definitely sounds like he was a very, very detailed photographer. And even, I mean, because some of his portraits, I mean, they don't feel like, I mean, it, they feel almost effortless, but then to know how much work he might go to, to set one up, I mean, that's pretty impressive, actually. I think, I think I'm trying to think, I, I want to say it was Arnold's quote, but I think he had a quote that said um, that photography is, I don't know, I don't know the percentages, it was like 5% inspiration, 95% perspiration. Um, I believe that because because a lot of it was having first having the vision of what yes. the picture was going to be, and then the moving things around to create the composition to be able to execute the vision. But and and there was a lot of physical moving around of things, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, this will sound funny, but, and, and I, I still don't know that I'm very good at it. Um, but I, I got some, early on in my career, I got a very good piece of advice from an art director. And um, I typically, if I was asked to do a portrait, I would be so focused on the person that I wouldn't be focused on the environment. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the person would be fine, but the environment would kind of be lacking. And the art director said to me that I was such a good architectural photographer <laughs> that, that basically go into the environment, focus on the environment first, and then put and the, then person the, person. the environment and have the person be secondary to the environment, which is really what environmental portraiture's about. You know, think about the environment first and the subject second. But, but I mean, it, it's almost giving the environment and the subject equal weighting. Mm -hmm. Even in the uh, even in the discussion of the Institute for Advanced Study, you know, you you it wasn't that you weren't thinking about the subject; you were thinking about the environment and then the subject, as opposed to just being so focused on the subject that that you know you're you're not taking into consideration the environment. No, I think that yeah. That is, I mean, 
That is really good advice. I mean, for anything really environmental, um, lifestyle shooting even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think it, it's where we've gotten better as far as our people driven architectural photography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is, is that, that I don't, I don't think there's ever a time that we walk into a space that we don't think about the space first and then we put the people into the space. Yeah. And, and, but it, it's funny if somebody calls you to, ask you to do a portrait you you get so focused on the person yeah you know, that 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 you forget I mean it, it, even even if you've been at it for 30 years you forget you know you've got to remind yourself and step back and kind of go okay you know we we need to we need to think about these things well, no, and, and it's funny you say that because even with the um, environmental portraits that we were um, hired to do next week, that was where my first thought went, okay, well, how are we going to light this person? And not even thinking about the office space that we're going to be accomplishing this in, right. which blends itself to so much, you know, so many right. other opportunities. So no, that is, yeah, you are completely right. No, and 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 I think you know, but that that that's a bit different because you're the office space for the most part is going out of focus and into soft focus. But still, well, that's true. Regardless, that office space, it's still even if it's out of focus or in soft focus, it's still creating shapes and 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 things behind that person. Yeah. And, you're not gonna want some like weird plant coming out of their head from a cubicle or exactly goodness knows what. So yeah, yeah. Without but question. You assisted right. in New York, but you assisted for you know some really wonderful portrait photographers, even besides Arnold Newman. So mm -hmm. if you can just say who those well, I mean, are to. I work for Richard Avedon. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there you're talking the antithesis. Mm -hmm. You're talking the antithesis of Arnold Newman because, you know, for the time I worked for Avedon, he basically was shooting in the studio. We basically were using strobe lights. And typically the background was either a white or gray backdrop. Yeah. So so there, there it's the antithesis of what I was just talking about. You're you're removing the background. You're totally obliterating the background, so that all the focus becomes upon the the subject, and there's no place else for the eye to go, and and that the you're being expected to tell the entire story through the subject themselves, not having the background or whatever to. Um, further um, tell their tell their story almost because that was yeah. the thing with um I mean and really I, I can only bring this show up in particular because it was the only Avedon show I got to see but um the in the American West right. show I mean those huge gorgeous portraits against white white yeah. and the only story you hear about, you know, these people is from the captions, like the drifter or, you know, something of that nature. But, and I feel like it, it almost would be so interesting to see Newman have photographed those same people and what his photographs would have looked like versus Avedon's in terms of what symbolism would have been used kind of I, tell their story. I can tell you, you know, and you can read plenty of stories about Arnold, but, um, you know, deep down, I think Arnold was a very, like I said, loving, compassionate person. Mm -hmm. uh, Avedon wasn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, I think if he had done the in the American West, 
um, it would be a much more compassionate view of those people. Um, Probably not as harsh. <laughs> I do want to say um, just thank you for sitting down and talking um, talking with me about this. I know, like I said, I've worked for you for years, but um, this is really, I mean. We don't talk about this stuff, quite frankly. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> We're really focused on architecture and we're focusing yeah we're focused yeah. on what we would yeah what we're dealing with in the moment and you know um but i mean it, it was it was a very interesting time and i feel very blessed to have had some of the opportunities i had in new york city i mean yeah pretty much it's like the envy of tons of people so including myself you worked uh for definitely some powerhouse people that, you know, not many, not many can say that. And, you know, the great thing I think about your time in New York is that you were in New York, but you didn't become New york -y, if you get what I mean. That yeah. you're definitely still a very down to earth person and you're not like, well, I worked for Avedon, I worked for Arnold Newman, so. I think you, the interesting thing is you found that the successful people working in New York City, especially as assistants, were all from the Midwest and had very Midwestern um, work ethic to them. You know, that they, they were there because they wanted to learn and they wanted to work hard and they didn't mind working hard. The truth of the matter is whether it's portraiture, whether it's architecture, I don't care what it is. I mean, Photography is much harder work than people recognize to do it commercially, to do it well, and to be able to make a living doing it. It's, I'm, I mean, I've seen scads of people go by the wayside. One problem is that many people do get discouraged because they feel like, oh, you know, I don't have an eye. You know, they, they feel that, you know, they're just not good enough because of X, Y, Z, they didn't go to school for it, you know, what have you. But really, if you have the eye and are like a pretty awesome person to work with, I feel like you will be successful regardless. And that's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of this comes down to shooting, 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 you know? Yes. Oh my goodness. Never stop shooting. Photographing, you should say yeah. <laughs> photographing. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you go. Okay. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Super appreciated. And I'm sure I'll talk to you super soon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah.